Doctor, the conversation is the efficacy. What's the right way for someone like me to understand the efficacy between Johnson & Johnson, Moderna, and Pfizer? Well, important is uh, to, to, to know about what it does on what really matters in, in the pandemic here, and it's hospitalization, death, and severe disease. And when you look at the protection against the severe disease, it's 85% across the globe, whether it's in the US, South America, um, and South Africa, in the, uh, including on the variants, ethnicity, and ages. And what's very important, we had after day 28, no deaths and no hospitalization anymore. And so if you compare the vaccines, it's very important to know that all the vaccines are very efficacious on preventing severe disease and death. And that's why people have to get vaccinated very quickly with whatever vaccine they can get. And hopefully ours will contribute significantly because it's a single shot, very easy to use, very easy to distribute yep. because of the refrigeration. Hmm? Doctor, good morning. It's Guy in London. You are, though, I understand, testing a two-shot regime. How much more effective do you think the vaccine could be with a two-shot two -shot regime? Well, we don't know. We'll, we are evaluating that. We started the two-shot in, uh, uh, in parallel with the single shot to learn the difference between the two. But we are surprisingly strong protection, and it is uh, is durable. We measure effect, which goes up uh, post day 51. And so we learned from our Zika and RSV vaccine that it could last for a very long time. So we are learning as we go. This is just 12 months into uh, the, the development of this product. So uh, we'll learn as we go and in the course of the year we'll know more about two shot mm -hmm. uh, i've been reading a lot about the risk that the vaccines are so effective against coronavirus that any booster to combat variants won't actually do that much good because the first ones were so good what's the concern uh, in that that other variants will just sidestep a vaccine altogether well, we have to learn that. It's new. The variants are new. Uh, we are the first one who have evaluated against the South African variant, the 13551, uh, um, and we showed very high efficacy. efficacy. We, don't, we don't know how it will evolve, but as we are doing an expansion on to, to that study in South Africa with several 10,000 people, we will learn in the coming months uh, how the virus will evolve under the pressure of, the, of a broad-spectrum vaccine like ours. Doctor, you, you come at this from a scientific process. Um, here in the UK, for instance, there's a great deal of concern about new variants coming into the country, uh, that we will undermine the, the work that has been done in vaccinating huge portions of the population thus far. Do you think the governments are right to be concerned? Do you think travel uh, and, and the, the sort of global travel phenomenon that we were so used to uh, is something that needs to be restricted for a while? Do you think that actually governments do and should be careful? Well, the variant... Um emerges all over the world independent of South Africa. It was first observed to be very broad, broadly uh, tran, tran, um, distributed there, but it, it is absolutely, it can independently emerge in Europe in any country because the amount of replication which is ongoing and the logic of a virus, it will evolve. And this evolution is not different in South Africa as in Europe. And so we call it the South African variant, but in fact, it's first observed in South Africa. And I'm pretty sure that in many parts of Europe, this variant is independently emerging from travel. Uh, and that's why travel should not be blamed for this. It is the number of people who are infected is the, is the reason why we get these, uh, this evolution in the virus. Mm -hmm. um, how quickly do you think that the vaccine will be approved in other countries? And how quickly can you get supplies to those countries? I'm specifically thinking the UK, but it can be anywhere. Yeah, we have we we, also, we have submitted the file already in the U.S. and it got approved over the weekend. Um, we uh, similarly in Europe with EMA, we have submitted a file to the WHO for getting it broad approved all around the world and to many many different authorities as we go in the next few days and weeks. So um, we have we have supplies uh, in. Uh, uh, before the summer, but as we said, we are going to have one billion in the course of the year, and that will be broadly distributed around the world and hopefully contribute significantly to combating the pandemic. Mm. 
when do you think we're going to see a vaccine available for pregnant women? When do you think we're going to see a vaccine available for teenagers? When are we going to see a vaccine that is available for the immunocompromised, do you think? Well, we waited for the efficacy data to broader start broader uh, evaluation. So we are accelerating now the adolescent and the, and the small children. We know from our platform, uh, from Ebola, from, uh, from Zika, from different uh, studies, that uh, where we included in 200,000 people have been vaccinated for Ebola. And there there were pregnant women, there were kids up to uh, starting at age of one. So we have a very good experience. This is a different vaccine with the same platform. We are very confident we'll get there, but we'll have to generate the data. On pregnancy, also in our large-scale Ebola studies, we evaluated pregnancy. The studies are ongoing. Data will become available. Hopefully, in the coming few months, we have good evidence, or at least we can mm -hmm. provide some safety data in pregnancy. Before we let you go, um, a viral vector vaccine is a huge, huge, huge change in the medical industry. And I wonder what else you're going to be doing after this vaccine that will, what other medical, what other medicines are you going to be using this technology for? Well, we are doing at the moment a HIV study, uh, a phase two and a phase three study uh, to do a HIV vaccine for RSV, and it can be broader used for other viral infections. And uh, we'll further expand it in different indications.